We start the afternoon with uh, special thanks to Karma, um, our gold business partner. Slide change, please, um, for today's plenary afternoon session. So please thank Karma for me. Our first afternoon um, speaker, and we're delighted to welcome him from New York, is Jerry Nichols. Jerry is the global head of marketing performance management at SAP, where he leads the efforts to ensure that SAP marketing objectives achieve their organizational objectives. Prior to joining and rejoining SAP in 2013, Jerry built and led the analytics practice for JWT in New York. SAP North America and Cisco Systems. Jerry, you're very welcome. Thank you, Barry. I'm very happy to be here today uh, with mm -hmm. each of you. And as, as Barry mentioned, uh, I have career experience uh, both in the high tech side as well as the agency side. So I think what you're going to find today is a lot of the techniques that we're applying in the uh, business to business space are ones that are historically used in the B2C space. Um, my session today is brand to cash, and I'm really going to talk about how we are able to quantify the impact of uh, marketing uh, across the customer journey for uh, a major global marketing campaign. In terms of agenda, I want to spend a few minutes talking about the proliferation of, of, of marketing data. Uh, really in the past five to, year, five to ten years, we've really seen an explosive growth in marketing data, spend a few minutes talking about how we define and measure success along the customer journey, meaning we're taking a customer-centric perspective, not just an internal perspective. Uh, the importance of really being able to tell a story with data, right? With so much information, how do you pull it all together to make sense of it that's relevant to your business? And then last, we'll talk about some of the key learnings that we went through in this process. So if we think a little bit about the chronology of marketing data, um, it's really very recently where we have such an explosive growth. So if we think about in the 70s, uh, it was really around uh, census data. We see uh, mainframe computing. Um, you know, come into life. Uh, then in the 90s, we see uh, personal commute computing, and then we start to see network connectivity. So that's when we start to see the application of database marketing, um, data application in all industries, not just limited. When we get into the 2000s, that's when we start to see uh, business intelligence dashboards for everyone, really customer relationship marketing as, as a discipline, 360 degree views of, of, of customer data and predictive analytics. Um, what's key to note is a lot of the data prior to this time uh, was structured data. A lot of the information that we're getting today from social media is unstructured data. So where we're seeing now in this decade is really a proliferation of mobile uh, and social media data. The data is uh, structured and unstructured, which means it's more complex to make sense out of it. Uh, we see uh, cloud-based computing, and then also a war for talent, because the, as, as the information for big data grows, um, the, the, the demand for people who have the skill sets to make sense of this information also grows. So let's think about it in, in another way, right? So by 2020, we'll generate 40 zettabytes of data, uh, that's 40 trillion gigabytes. So that's a huge amount of data. Uh, every, every minute we generate 204 million email messages, uh, over 2 million Google searches in a minute, uh, 48 hours of YouTube videos in a minute, and over 100,000 tweets, right? So if we think about this proliferation of data and information, um, you know, we're really challenged as professionals to make sense of it. So remember, you know, at the end of the day, this is a famous poet, right? The, the universe is made of stories, not atoms. 
And that's the way that I feel about data, right? So the universe is made of stories, not just the data itself. And how can we use this information to tell a story that is also business relevant? So for us, you know, tying back to the overall session, this is really what our process is for making metrics matter. Um, you know, first we start off with very uh, strategic objectives about what it is we want to achieve. We define a measurement plan. We measure, track results, benchmark, test. Uh, we communicate our results, and we also do action planning. This, this provides a platform um, for continuous improvement, right? So at the end of the day, it's more than just uh, measurement or tools. It's about creating a platform that uh, delivers insights uh, and drives actions to help you meet your strategic objectives. Um, you know, what this process does is it, it, it helps us answer several key business questions. Um, how are we achieving it against our goals? Um, what worked? Uh, what didn't work and why? Um, what are our recommendations to the business? And how can we be better in the future? So this is, this is very uh, consistent with the, the Barcelona principles. It's just a little bit more simplified uh, for a broad approach. So our challenge uh, at SAP was to be able to quantify the business results of a multi-million dollar advertising campaign uh, for the corporation. Uh, they made a very significant or, uh, uh, investment in the advertising campaign and they wanted to know specifically marketing, what are you giving to us when we're making this investment for you? Um, as part of this, uh, there were strategic objectives that we had, but also operational metrics that we measured along the customer journey to help ensure success. Um, the, the campaign itself, the Run Simple campaign, uh, introduced SAP is the brand that simplifies business operations. So, in terms of, this is just an example of some of our creative assets. Uh, Run Simple was translated into 14 languages, 29 markets, uh, ran across 24 TV networks, 28 airports, 32 magazines, 60 uh, digital platforms, 120 articles, and a, and a total of 4.2 billion awareness exposures for the campaign overall. And this is just an example of some of our creative assets here. We also had a sponsorship uh, with the MPA. That's our airport ad. This is our, uh, for our, our physical Sapphire event. So if we think about this, right, there's, there's a lot of media, there's a lot of channels, and there's a lot of different phases of the customer journey. So how do we take all this information and make sense of it? So the first step we did is we established a strategic objective for the campaign. Um, our campaign objective was to drive awareness and demand for SAP HANA through the Run Simple messaging. So that was a very clearly stated uh, objective for the overall campaign. And then we had with it strategically associated KPIs. So from a perception point of view, we had a uh, year-over-year increase in earned brand missions in social media. Uh, we also had year-over-year -year increase in our purchase consideration, which comes from a global brand tracker. In terms of our portfolio KPIs, these are our demand generation KPIs. Uh, we looked at year-over-year -year increase in leads, uh, pipeline build, and then also our, our software license revenue and cloud booking. So at the end of the year, we knew what success was going to be look like uh, based on uh, these five strategic KPIs. So it was, it was no surprise. Um, now the second thing is, is, is we couldn't wait until the end of the year and kind of open up the envelope and see how the campaign was doing, right? So we also had to ensure that we executed the campaign in the most effective operational way. So in order to do that, what we did is we aligned our customer uh, journey 
to our media channel plan. So what you see here are the different phases of the customer journey. Awareness, education, intention, purchase, and advocacy. And along each phase of these, we had specific operational measures that we measured along the way. Because if we had a breakdown in either awareness and education or intention, we weren't going to make our purchase goal. So we really evaluated the customer journey all along um, our, our, our media channels. Uh, we also um, created a measurement plan, right? So it aligned to the overall campaign success. Uh, we, we measured our um, performance to industry benchmarks. Uh, we aligned our customer journey to our media plan and our channel, channel strategy. Again, the customer journey stage was defined as awareness, education, intention, purpose, and advocacy. Uh, the measurement and plan included digital metrics, social media monitoring, brand health, uh, media coverage, and also our, our demand generation performance. So here, here's a blowout example of this, just a little bit for our awareness metrics. We can see from our awareness metrics, we looked at our competitive media spend, our impressions, uh, the number of visits to our website, our organic social post impressions, our email open rates. We looked at our traditional media volume, uh, share of voice, net promoter score, social media, brand recall, et cetera. So for each one of these, we identified the sources of where the information came from, as well as what the comparison types were. So whether that be industry benchmarks, pre-post campaign, monthly benchmarks, quarterly benchmarks, or year-over-year -year benchmarks. Now, again, the importance of this is, is that we understand along each step of the customer journey how we're performing. We also use this information to optimize our campaign. When you get into this, you never quite know what you're going to find. So an example of this is, is we, we, we were looking at our, our, our video and where people were falling off in the video and the completion rate. And so when we actually watched the video, we noticed that where most people were dropping off, they were actually missing what the definition of run simple was. So using that information, we're actually able to have some creative enhancements that push the definition of run simple, which is the guiding principle of our campaign, to the front of the video. So you never quite know what you're going to find uh, when you get in here, but not knowing that information could have negative impacts downstream. Uh, you know, additionally, so once you have your measurement plan measure, we set up uh, a regular cadence for our operational measurement. Uh, again, you can't, you can't read it out in here, but these, these, these align to each stage of the customer journey and the metrics that we're tracking here. And this is just a blowout example of this. So we, through this, we're able to identify uh, where, where we're performing well, where we're performing weak, and where our opportunities are to optimize. Again, we tie this back to our strategic objectives, what I shared with you earlier, or our operational metrics. These are the actual strategic KPIs, our purchase consideration, our earned brand mentions, our leads, our pipeline coverage, our revenue and bookings. We measure these on, on, on a monthly basis. Uh, also, communicate results. Right? So it's one thing to do all the measurement, but if you're not communicating the results, then it, it doesn't really matter. So this is an example of an infographic that we created for marketing, right? So what this provided for us was a very uh, user-friendly format for people to understand uh, how the campaign was doing and what our opportunities for improvement were. Now, some of the key learnings here, uh, we need to involve the right people, right? So we need to get alignment on the, with the strategy team, the advertising team, uh, internal with the measurement in terms of what the customer journey is. If you can imagine, it's, it's really a cross-functional activity uh, within our uh, advertising agency, getting the, the media folks aligned with planning and also creative in terms of what success looks like. 
Um, really defining the objectives and success up front. If you don't have that set up front, then how are you going to know what you're going to measure? Um, this was another important here, uh, important point is proactive versus a reactive approach. The folks that are responsible for the campaign, they just want to get this stuff in market, right? So they're not going to wait for you to say, hey, here's the measurement plan, here's what success looks like. So you have to really be very proactive, get in front of the business, define what success is, and be proactive in your approach. Um, also need to ensure that you identify the right operational metrics, uh, sources and comparative metrics. Um, be consistent, analyze and optimize. I talked about some of the examples that we identified in there through the video and the creative optimization. Um, visualize, excite the audience, and keep learning as you go. So the, the usage of the infographics uh, really helped us tell a story and it was something that folks can relate with. And, you know, lastly, have some fun with this. I mean, with all this information and technology that we have today, uh, we're very fortunate to, to, to have these types of assets. So, in terms of, you know, just kind of in summary here, um, you know, our, our measurement framework really changed the landscape for the organization. Uh, it brought together a single organizational vision in terms of what success looked like. Uh, we leveraged a, a myriad of data sources and inputs to tell a story. Uh, we validated the uh, efficacy and optimized a multi-million dollar advertising campaign. And then through this, we were also able to demonstrate success for our strategic APIs. structured, um, a lot of learnings in there. Um, I'd like someone to put the first question to Jerry, please. Is that first slot after lunch? No, you can <laughs> sort of thinking about it. Um, yes, down the front here, please. And I'm looking for the second question already. If someone would volunteer for that. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Now we some new media business in Poland. Uh, you've written a very distinctive word there, myriad of uh, social media sources. How do you evaluate which really matters and which don't? Just on the base of, you know, the group, maybe Facebook is bigger than Pinterest, or for certain purposes you choose certain media? So, so uh, in, in terms of what's important, I, I take it back to the customer journey and what am I trying to evaluate, right? So if I'm trying to measure awareness, then number of mentions or um, uh, share of voice would be relevant in my awareness bucket. If I was trying to uh, measure intention, perhaps maybe shares or likes or interaction would be the measures that I would use. If I wanted to use advocacy, then I might use sentiment. So I use whatever the metrics are aligned to the customer journey based on what I want to optimize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gary. Hi, Mary. I'm here from Ogilvy. We spoke earlier. Um, I thought it was excellent that you looked at uh, measurement across. Hold on, please, Mary. Ah, that's all right. I'm quite loud anyway, don't worry. Um, so if it cuts out, you'll hear me off the back. Um, you measured across the customer journey, which not a lot of people are doing in a really smart, structured way. Yeah. Um, and one of the challenges for our clients and a lot of marketers in the room too is that they don't always own different stages of the customer journey. How do you make sure that you have enough ownership across that customer journey when perhaps a sales team or a, a yeah. customer management yeah. function owns that to be able to build yeah. a system around it? Yeah, uh, so that's an excellent, uh, that's an excellent question. Typically organizations think of this in terms of inquiries, visits to the website, leads, conversions, they think of it in a very operational set. And that's a very good point here is that we're taking a very customer-centric approach in terms of, of how we measure success mm -hmm. along the journey. Uh, in terms of the parts where we don't own, 
uh, we work out very closely uh, with our sales organization. So one of the reasons that, that um, our campaign was so successful this year was that we had a strong alignment with sales. Uh, SAP HANA was a sales priority. So when we had that, you know, that uh, media um, uh, waiting with operational excellence, it really gave a halo and sales was ready to catch it. So if sales, if, if HANA was not a priority for our sales organization, a lot of that would, would have been washed. But having that alignment, uh, we saw a significant uh, increase in our convergence in leads because it was a party from sales. We saw about a 25% increase in our lead conversion, and we also saw a much lower uh, cost per in our cost per leads as well. So having that tight alignment for sales is, is really mission critical. Thank you. Uh, Coach the back. Thank you. Um, Allison from Garcana. Um, you mentioned that you were um, measuring purchasing consideration on a monthly basis. Could you talk a little bit about how you're doing that and then how you're showing the data? Yeah, so, so we, we actually have a, uh, an always-on brand tracker that runs in uh, 13 markets, um, which are our most uh, important <laughs> markets. They probably represent about 80 or 85 percent of our revenue. So we, we have an always-on uh, brand tracker in market, and then we just pull out a monthly read. We get about, uh, at a minimum, uh, 100 per market unit per month. So it comes from our always-on brand tracker. Okay, thank you, Jay. Um, I've got time for another question. If we have one, there's a hand. Thank you. Hi, Adunia from UNICEF. I have a question related to the infographics as a way to tell your story. And I was wondering, how do we decide what would be that goes into your infographic? And also, what sort of target audience do you decide about when you're building that sort of story that you're telling? Yeah, that, that, that's an excellent question. So, so we, we first started off the infographic for uh, internal marketers working on the campaign. And it was actually aligned to the customer journey. So we talked about along awareness what we're performing uh, through the different phase of the customer journey. Um, I have another ver version that was aligned to the five key strategic objectives of the Run Simple campaign, uh, which actually was shared uh, with our executive board and to all of our marketing we did uh, at the end of the year. But again, um, you know, if, if you tie the final success is uh, both strategically and operationally, then that gives you the framework for your infographics and everything else that comes out of it. So the first one was based on our, our operational framework. The second one was based on our overall success of the campaign. And the infographics were a huge hit. Um, we actually had a, a, a version that was also rendered on a mobile device as well. And it wasn't a big investment considering everything else we've done on the campaign to really take it across the, the finish line and help demonstrate uh, what marketing does. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you for being a special guest today.